We live in a society that is very enamored with the idea of fighting evil or of fighting hate. But in this video, I'm going to make the case that spreading love is actually a lot more effective than fighting hate in terms of actual outcomes in the world. In terms of actually creating a better world, spreading love works far better than, than uh, fighting against hate. And this is something that Jesus talked about a lot, even though a lot of Christians find this very difficult to accept. Jesus said a lot of things to the tune of turn the other cheek and he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. He was always uh, discouraging people from using violence as a means to solve their problems. And this is because he understood some things that most people do not understand, and especially the time that Jesus lived, because if you think about the cultural context, he was born among the Jewish people while they were under the rule of the Romans. And the Jews were very unhappy about this. They, were, they felt oppressed by the Romans. They felt like they didn't have their sovereignty. And they were waiting for a Messiah to come along and lead them into war against the Romans so they could fight for their independence from them. But then what Jesus actually did and actually taught was basically exactly the opposite. And the reason for that is that he understood some things about the nature of reality that the Jews of that time did not understand and most people nowadays don't understand. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain what the nature of reality is that Jesus was getting at and what are the more effective strategies based on that knowledge. Now, if you look at most of our stories, the, the general storyline goes like this, that there's the, the bad guy that is uh, doing bad things against people, and then the hero steps up, and then he goes and fights the bad guy, and kills the bad guy, and now that the bad guy is gone, everybody lives happily ever after. And we love those kind of stories. They make us feel good, myself included, but I don't think it really presents an accurate picture of reality, and that's why uh, this kind of fighting as a way of bringing good in the world doesn't seem to work most of the time. Now, if you look at my drawing here, uh, I'll give you a couple seconds to admire my artistic genius, but uh, this is an iceberg where most of it is underwater and a little bit is on the top of the water. And this is how I, I represent the way reality works, where this is the physical up here, the tip of the iceberg, the part that's easy to see, the part that's tangible, and the part that most people focus on because it's the only part that's above water. And then down here, this big part is the spiritual. And this is the nature of reality in general, that the physical is a manifestation of the spiritual. And if you want to change anything in the physical world, you're going to have far better success if you focus on the spiritual because that's the basis of where the physical comes from. And this is literally scientifically true, and I'm not going to get deep into the science here, but um, we're understanding more and more. Physics is beginning to understand that the physical uh, realities are, are based on energy, are based on waves, and that using our consciousness, which is our spiritual essence, we can literally change the nature of reality. So, for example, consciousness can change whether light acts as a particle or a wave. It can literally change the physical properties of light. It can change the rate of radioactive decay. Your willpower can literally change the rate of radioactive decay of a radioactive substance. It can cause healing in people. It can cause healing in yourself. If you want to see a really cool video where I detail a lot of this new science, check out this video. But for now, I want to talk about where it makes sense to put our focus if we want to bring about good in the world. Now, the forces of evil in the world want to engage on this level. They want to engage on the physical level because they have an advantage there. And so that's why they try to push this propaganda saying that you're, that you're stupid or you're superstitious if you believe in anything spiritual. You know, despite the fact that the science is constantly proving that the spiritual is more powerful than the physical, they still push this narrative in the schools and in the media um, that, that the physical is all that exists because they want us to fight them on this level because they will, the forces of evil will always have an advantage on the physical level. And so if we try to fight them on the physical level, they are most often going to win because they are willing, they have resources at their disposal that good people do not. If you think about you fight a war against an evil enemy, and you, you, you know, bring your rifle onto the battlefield, and then you find yourself being stared down by a 10-year-old pointing a gun at you. What are you going to do in that situation? 
right? There's only two possible choices, right? You either have to get killed or you have to kill a child. What good person is going to be able to uh, stand up to that situation? Nobody. The fact that evil people have no morality gives them a massive advantage in any kind of physical conflict. They're willing to force children to fight. They're willing to torture people. They're willing to threaten people's family members. And as long as they have those resources at their disposal and good people do not, then they're always going to have that advantage fighting on the physical level. And then some people who believe themselves to be on the side of the good get so frustrated by this that they start using the same tactics as the evil people. They start torturing people. They start threatening people's families, etc. And eventually, you get to the point where the people who believe themselves to be on the side of the good, can you even call them good anymore? Probably not. So as long as we're at this level, as long as we're at the physical level, we're always going to be in a disadvantage because evil people are just plain better at killing than good people are. And this applies to politics too, right? If you, if you go out and vote, that you're, you're working at the physical level. If you uh, donate to the political party of your choice, you are working at the physical level. And if you truly are working on the side of the good, again, you're going to be at a massive disadvantage because you're not going to be willing to engage in the corruption that they are. You're not going to be willing to engage in bribery. You're not going to be willing to engage in threats. You're not going to be willing to spread false information that helps your cause, etc., etc., etc. So again, if you're, if you're working on the political level, if you are on the side of good, you are going to be at a significant disadvantage. So on this level, is always advantage evil. However, working on the spiritual level, which as you can see by the beautiful drawing that I, I created for you here, is much bigger, is much more substantial than the physical level, the advantage is going to be always to the good. Good spirituality is far more powerful than evil spirituality, something I, d I described in, in detail in this video. And by the way, the evil forces are very much aware of this, which is why they always try to keep the field of engagement up here only on the physical. A really cool example of this is the early Christians in the Roman Empire, that the, the early Christians were persecuted by the Romans. They were thrown into arenas and torn apart by wild animals for the people's entertainment, right? The, the Roman pagans at the time clearly had the upper hand on the physical level. At the physical level, the evil people, the people that were willing to feed innocent people to lions, those were the people that always won on the physical level. However, with the benefit of hindsight, looking at this 2,000 years later, which side survived? Roman paganism or Christianity? Obviously Christianity, because they were working at the spiritual level. The Bible says that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the dark rulers of the spirit world. And so if we're going to win the actual fight, we need to be fighting where the actual fight is, which is at the spiritual level. Now, there are three main reasons why the spiritual is so much more effective than fighting on the physical level. And so I'm going to go over what those are. The first is simply that people don't die. And of all, all of our stories where the, the hero goes and, and fights the villain and kills the villain and now the villain is gone, well, reality doesn't exactly work that way. When a person dies, when a person's body dies, their essence, their consciousness still lives on, right? And so you have a person that is living in the physical world, a person who is incarnate, you kill that person, then that person does not suddenly disappear from existence. If you kill an evil person, that uh, evil person becomes an evil spirit, and that evil spirit still fights the same battle on the same side, but now from the spiritual realm instead of from the physical realm. So you think that you're eliminating the person by killing the person, but you're not. You're not eliminating the person at all. The person is still there and still just as powerful or perhaps more powerful than before they died. And then here on the earth, you might have gotten rid of one evil leader or one evil dictator or something, but there are literally billions of people who are oriented towards evil who could easily step in and take that person's place. 
and they will do so because they are uh, influenced by the evil spirituality who the old leader has now become, right? So you didn't get rid of the leader, you just passed, passed the buck on to the next person that's going to do exactly the same thing, maybe worse. And in fact, you might have noticed that historically most successful revolutions, most of the time that a tyrannical leader was deposed, Whatever leader, whatever government stepped in to replace that leader was often even worse than the leader that was deposed. This is why. It's because killing somebody is fighting on the spiritual level. You're not going to get rid of that person. And the evil spirituality that is just as bad now as it was before is just going to replace that one bad leader with another bad leader. Okay, now the second reason is that it's not always clear who the bad guy is. See, the forces of evil are very good at manipulating people psychologically. They're very good at spreading propaganda. They're very good at spreading confusion to make you think that good is bad and bad is good. If you've noticed that the evil forces in the world are the ones that control the media, the ones that control education, then you're absolutely right. They recognize it as a major power source for them in order to confuse people about what is good and what is bad. And in many cases, you have two sides fighting against each other that are both equally bad. You probably recognize that in politics, that most of the time, both sides are on the side of evil. They're only, the, the, the conflict between them is really only illusory. There is no conflict between them. They support each other. But in order so that they can obfuscate the situation, or, or in order so they can make people think that there's a choice, they pretend to oppose each other. And so it's very common, if you try to fight evil, that you find yourself actually fighting the good, because somebody tricked you to believe that the good person was actually evil. Or, you end up fighting on behalf of one evil person to depose the other evil person, when it really makes no difference which evil person is in power. So again, we love this fairy tale notion where there's the hero and there's the bad guy and there's the oppressed maiden or whatever and it's very clear which role everyone plays but in real life it often doesn't work that way. It's often not that clear cut and the forces of evil are, are very uh, skilled at manipulating public opinion so that they are confused as to the position of those roles. And then where this gets really nasty is that some people, including decent, good, normal people, have been led to believe that they themselves are the bad guy. These people th think that since they've been maligned by the media, or they've been maligned by the people they grew up with, or they've been maligned by somebody, they've been slandered by somebody, they start to doubt themselves, and they start to think, am I the bad guy? Am I the person who has to die for everybody else to be able to live happily? And you have a lot of suicides that happen because of that. Because if, if you believe that you're the bad guy, then, and you don't want to be the bad guy, and you actually have a good heart, then you're going to be at least somewhat motivated to get rid of yourself as an obstacle to other people's happiness. So we all have to be very, very careful when we're fighting hate or fighting people on the physical level uh, because we might be doing horrible harm to people that don't deserve it at all. Okay, now the third reason that working on the physical level doesn't really work so well and working on the spiritual level works much better is that people don't stay evil forever. In fact, it's the destiny of the universe that everybody uh, eventually becomes good. That everybody recognizes that evil is not serving them. And I, I, did, I went into this in detail in this video all about how selfishness is the key to enlightenment. Because, I'll, I'll summarize real quick, you start to realize that doing bad things against people makes your life worse. Right? And there's some really obvious ways that that's true, right? Like if you kill somebody and steal his money, um, then if that guy has a brother or a father or somebody who's not so happy about that, he's going to come and try to kill you. 
right? So it makes sense to not kill people and steal their money. And then you, you just go down this progression where you realize that every evil thing that you can do only brings pain and suffering upon yourself. And the good things that you do uh, bring prosperity and, and riches and um, happiness upon yourself. So uh, human evolution is a process of figuring that out, of recognizing that that good, uh, doing good in the world brings good upon you and that doing evil in the world brings evil upon you. It's a natural law of the universe. And so everybody eventually figures that out. As the Bible says that every knee will bow, every tongue confess. Everybody is in this process of starting out evil and getting good. So we have this idea, again, this, this fairy tale narrative where there's this bad guy that's just 100% evil, and if you can eliminate him, then the world will, will be happy, but it doesn't work that way. Everybody is, is on some continuum from evil to good, and everybody is working at their own pace to get from that evil position to that good position. And we do have some stories in our culture that illustrate this really well, and I love these stories. Like the, the movie The Joker, where the, the main character is this guy who is, is mentally ill, and he's just treated horribly by the whole world. Everybody is awful to him, and eventually he finally snaps and starts killing people. I love these kind of stories because it helps you empathize a little bit with the, the so-called bad guy, right? That this is a person like anybody else, who has had a very difficult life, and while his actions are certainly not justified, it begs the question, what if somebody could have been his friend? What if somebody had just said a few nice words to him? How would that have changed the world for the better, right? That is that is working on the spiritual level. That is bringing people towards the good. Because everybody is some combination of evil and good. And if we can help others, encourage others towards the good, if we can support others, we can show love to others, then all of a sudden the bad people start becoming good. That's what happens. Another one I love is The Return of the Jedi, the Star Wars movie, where at the end of the movie, um, Luke is fighting against Darth Vader and he loses, right? The good guy loses to the bad guy but then he convinces the bad guy to start turning good. He says, I, I realize that there's still some good in you. And so the, the bad guy turns good and eventually the good people win. Why? Because of he was working on the spiritual, right? He couldn't win on the physical. He lost. He was, they were fighting with lightsabers, right? Trying to kill each other. And then the, uh, the good lost to the evil on the physical level but then the good won the overall war on the spiritual level. Obviously this is just fiction, but you can see how this applies to the real world. You can see that showing love to people uh, is one of the best ways that you can possibly get push people from the evil to the good. How you can affect the world's spiritual atmosphere in such a way that more good people make for a better society, makes for a better government, makes for a better economy, makes for a better everything. And this is super relevant right now with current events because the enemy is, is pulling out all the stops to provoke us to fight them on their own turf, to fight them on the physical level. If you think about how they're shutting down people's businesses, they're destroying people's jobs, they're destroying people's livelihoods, they're, they're starving people to death, they're not letting families see their loved ones in the hospital, they're forcing all of these indignities upon us, trying to provoke a response. They're hoping that we are going to fight them back violently on the physical level so then they can take their propaganda pieces and, and point to us and say, look at those people. Those people are violent. Those people are evil. We're the good guys. They want us to engage them on their terms. They want us to fight them at the physical level. And so the, the big message that I want to get across here is don't fall for it. The more nasty these people get, the more they expose themselves, the more they are shooting themselves in the foot. If they can't get the reaction that they're looking for, then they will have destroyed their own cause. So have patience, stay positive. We are winning this battle. It might not seem like it, but we are. And the more that we show love to each other, the more we stay positive, the more we do not give in to their attempts at provocation, 
the faster the good is going to win over the evil in this situation. And the faster this planetary transition from one of evil, basically, to one where good predominates is going to happen. So show love to everybody around you. Pray for the world, pray for the people around you, including the people who you may view as the bad guys, because that's how we're going to win this fight. And if you'd like to learn more specific strategies about how you can do that, check out this video. And of course, if you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell beside the subscribe button, and share this video with anyone else who needs to hear it.